So matrix arithmetic is what we're going to do now. It's also and algebra. So we'll start out with the easy operation, addition and subtraction. There is no such thing as subtraction, so we'll cover that after uh, what, what you'll do with subtraction after we do addition. So what we're going to do is add two matrices together. So when you add matrices, they need to be the same size. So they both need to be have the same number of rows, same number of columns. I could write out the full matrix, but that takes quite a while to write A11, A12, dot, 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 all that good stuff. So I'm going to skip wherever I wrote the first matrix right here. I'm going to skip writing out this right here, and I'm going to use the what's right next to it, AIJ notation. And for the matrix B, we'll just call all the entries with lowercase b. So how do we add A plus B together? All we do is we get a matrix whose elements are the sum of the corresponding elements in each matrix. So you're just adding positions together. So there's really not much more going on with addition than this. It's a pretty easy operation. So we'll do an example. So we're going to add corresponding entries. So we'll start in the upper left. I usually just go upper left, upper right, the order that we read in. So we got 2 plus 1. And now we're going to go upper right, which is 3 minus 3. And now lower left is 0 plus 2. And lower right, 4 plus 6. And then just perform all these. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. 4 plus 6 is 10. <coughs> if your spacing is bad inside your matrix, you could Basically put a little grid inside of it so you can keep things straight of what is where. But as long as you're careful with your spacing and you give yourself a little extra room, you should be okay. Here's a bad way to write a matrix. So don't smash everything together like this. I don't know what in the world's going on on the bottom. Is it 21 and then 0 or 2 and then 10? So this is what you want to avoid right here. So that's a really bad way to write your matrix. So make sure it's pretty clear with your spacing. So this is addition. There's really not much more to it. We're going to look at scalar multiplication next. Basically, this is just distribution. So we're going to use Greek letters to represent scalars. And all scalars are, for us, are just real numbers. So we almost always work with real numbers, except now our elements the things we're going to add together are matrices. So if I'm going to talk about something that's not a matrix, I need to give it a name. The name we're going to use is scalars. So how do we multiply alpha times a matrix A? So I'll use the same A as above. So we have entries that look like AIJ. All you do is multiply every entry by alpha.
So that's all we do for scalar multiplication. It works just like distribution, except there's usually lots of things to distribute to. So let's do an example. So we'll do four times the same matrix we used earlier. So we multiply the scalar. This is four times two, four times three, four times zero, four times four. So we have eight, 12, zero, 16. So that's all scalar multiplication is. You're just distributing into your matrix. All right, all these things are equal, these three things I just wrote down. If we went this direction, you would call that factoring or unmultiplying. So if we go this direction, I call that multiplying. If I go the other direction, we usually call that factoring or unmultiplying. So let's combine addition and scalar multiplication together. So a few minutes ago, I said there's no such thing as subtraction. So the way to deal with subtraction, you're really adding a negative. You can absolutely subtract, even though it is a made up operation. So all I did here is I turned subtraction into addition of negative two times that matrix. So what you need to do first, before you actually add these together, you need to s multiply the five into the first matrix and the negative two into the se second matrix. So do those scalar multiples first, and then add the two matrices together. So I want you to do this right now. So you should have two matrices here that you're adding together, and you just add them on the next line. the ones that are the same size until you get into like multiple sizes. So does that <coughs> go with if you're just adding but it says instead of the coefficients it's just zero, negative one, two, three, and then you're add or you're subtracting negative one, two, you just multiply everything in there by negative one and then add it. So, so you can like either it subtract the two or add the negative version. Okay, no I would just yeah. Okay, okay. Hmm? Depends. But yeah. All right, so I <coughs> avoided subtraction by adding a negative. You could subtract if you want to, and you better get to the same matrix at the end. So any questions about this, either of these steps? And I showed more work before where I actually showed the things being multiplied and added or subtracted, but this time I just skipped those intermediate steps. So this could be the easiest question on your final exam or your next quiz. Well, not your next quiz, but your quiz. 
is after Thanksgiving. So this question is very quick, very easy to answer. So let's get into the more interesting things. Let's look at multiplication now. All right, so we did multiply things. What did we multiply a few minutes ago? A matrix times what? Um, coefficient. A matrix times a number, or a matrix times a scalar. So now we're going to look at matrix times a matrix. So we're going to look at matrix times matrix. So this is tricky. Now, when I say tricky, what I really mean is new. It's more complicated than addition, but it's not too difficult if you practice enough. So it's a lot like row reduction. It's not, once you understand it, it's an easy process, but doing enough problems so that you understand it is the tricky part. So here we go. I'll start with a two by two. So our first matrix will be A, B, C, D. The second one, E, F, G, H. The most important thing to remember here is you go across the first matrix and down the second matrix. And I strongly recommend that you draw these arrows out. If you don't want to draw the arrows, another thing to do is just line up like this right here. So we're going to cross the first matrix down the second matrix. Could we rewrite them if we wanted to? Like, like take F, H, uh, E, G, rewrite them like that, and then multiply it across. You might be able to do a transpose thing, but I recommend this way. Okay. All right, so when we multiply, what we're going to do is go across on the first matrix and down on the second matrix. So <clears throat> it's A times E, that's the first term, AE plus the second two terms are BG. That is the upper left entry in the product. Now we're going to look for the upper right entry. So we're going across the first matrix. So we're going on the AB row. And now we're going to go on the FH column. So we're in first row, second column, which will give us this position right here in the matrix. So I'm going to first row, second column. Make sure you got enough space in here when you write this out. So we got AF, BH plus BH. So now we're going for row two, column one position. So row two, it's the CD, column one is EG. CE plus DG. So I want you to write down the last term you get right here. So write down the bottom right, this is row two, column two. You should get CF plus DH. So these two matrices, we're going to multiply them. You know that we're going to multiply them because there is not a plus in between. 
So way back in the good old days with numbers, if you saw two next to an x, you know that means two times x. So two, uh, two elements just next to each other means multiplication. Same thing is true with matrices. All right, now I'm going to draw the arrows. So we're going across and then down. So you can draw in your, now there's two lines you can draw through your first matrix and only one through the second. So I'm going to do the top two entries in this matrix. So the top two entries going first row, first column, two times six plus three times one. Now we're gonna go for the upper right entry. So that's row one, column two. So I'm going for this spot over here. I generally go the way that we read. So that's two times two plus three times zero. So this matrix is going to have six entries in it total. So I want you to compute the other four entries here. So you're going to move on to row two now and use both of the columns to get these two entries. So I'll give you about two minutes to finish this up. Make sure your neighbor has the same answer you do or else at least one of you two is wrong if not both. It's a good time for questions as I walk around. So I'm going to skip some steps and just write the products. So we have 6 plus 4, and then 2 plus 0, 0 plus 2, and 0 plus 0. So we got 12 plus 3 is 15, 4, 10, 2, 2, 0. All right, questions on this product here? Is, well, is there something that has to do with the dimensions of the matrices? Absolutely. Okay. Yep, so we're going to look very specifically at the dimensions in a minute. So let's try one more example. <coughs> so I'm going to take the same first matrix and try to multiply it by itself. This is also known as squaring. So we're going across, down, same thing we always do. So we can start off okay. Two times two plus three times one plus something times zero. Here's the issue. We don't have anything to multiply that zero by. So these dimensions, even though these matrices have the exact same dimensions, you're not allowed to multiply them together. This is really strange. This means there are matrices that can't even be squared. That should seem really, really weird. 
So there's lots of matrices you're not even allowed to multiply together. It doesn't make sense to multiply them. So that's very different than numbers. You can multiply any two numbers together, no problem. It might take a long time, but any two numbers can be multiplied together. That is not true for matrices. All right, so this entire matrix does not exist. because we're not allowed to multiply can't multiply these all right so let's look at the dimensions a little more carefully and see what dimensions are we allowed to multiply together So we'll take our first matrix to be an M by N. And I'm going to multiply it by another matrix. And MN, let's go PQ, P by Q. I don't want to use the same letters because uh, I don't want to assume dimensions. So if I write out the dimensions, so how many rows does matrix A have, M or N? How many rows? What's the height of the matrix A? M. So the height is M. Remember RC, R by C, rows times columns. So it's a little strange. Rows actually count the height. So it's a little weird that that measurement always appears first, but it's just the way we write down matrices. So I have M rows and then the number of columns or the width is n. So those are the dimensions of the first matrix. Dimensions of the second matrix, the height or the number of columns is p, the number of, ro the number of rows is p, columns is q. So we're going to go across and down. So what dimensions need to line up? So how many entries am I going across in the matrix? This is A, and this is, of course, B. How many entries am I going across in A? <coughs> so I'm going across N. So I better pair those up with the same number of entries going down in the B matrix. So what I need is N to equal, whoa, N. I need M. No. Oh. N. We're going across N things and we're going down P things. So I need N to be the same number as P. If they don't match, I won't have the right number of things to multiply. So we think about this. <coughs> if I rewrite our matrices, so if N equals P, I can multiply wherever I see P, what I'm going to do is fill in N right there, because we said N needs to equal P. All right, so our inner dimensions right here need to match. So I call these the inner dimensions. So any questions about No, because that would, uh, I wouldn't have the same number of elements going uh, down on the first matrix, or across on the first matrix and down on the second. Okay. So we're about to look at the outer dimensions and what those, uh, w how to think about those. So for things like this, you can't switch it and be like B, P, X, or yeah, two times A, M, N, N, X, N, so like switch them, you can't do that? So we'll look at uh, changing the or commuting, that's called the commutative property. So right away you should be able to tell things are going to be messed up if I change the order. Because the inner dimensions would then be M and Q if I change the order. So one thing we're going to see is matrix multiplication is not commutative. If you change the order, not only could you get a different matrix, you also might not even be able to multiply them. 
So maybe a times b makes sense, but b times a you couldn't even multiply. All right, let's think of the dimensions. I'm going to call the product, I'll just call it c. I think that fits with the naming convention that I arbitrarily chose. So let's say <clears throat> that we're allowed to multiply these, so we get a matrix here. How many rows will this matrix have? So let's go back to our example. What determined the number of rows in our product? So I got three rows in our product. Where did that come from over here? So it's the number of rows in our first matrix. That'll be the number of rows in our product. So going back down, what's the number of rows in our first matrix? What letter is that? M. All right, let's go back. It should be pretty clear what, if things make sense, what the second dimension is. But let's go back and look again. This isn't the best example because the rows and columns of this matrix are both two. So I want to know the number of columns over here. What determine the number of columns in this product matrix? So if we think about the second matrix, that second matrix had two columns, and that determines how many columns we have in our product matrix. If I would have had a third column over here, I would have had a third column in my product. So the columns in the second matrix determine the columns in your product. And if you look, the columns are Q right there. So the easy way to think about it, your inner dimensions have to match, and then your outer dimensions are the dimensions of the product. So it works out kind of nicely like that. So your inner ones have to match, your outer ones are the dimensions of your product. So matrix multiplication is very, it's not easy, but it is straightforward. You have to know when you're not allowed to multiply two matrices together, and then you need to be able to compute the product when you are allowed to multiply them together. So I don't want to keep doing more examples because they all are pretty much exactly the same. Just go across, go down, be careful. So because of this, <coughs> this dimension property right here, matrix multiplication, is not commutative. So A, B, except very few, there's very few exceptions to this. Generally, A, B is not going to be B, A. So before we talk about the multiplicative identity, let's talk about the additive identity. So we've been working with numbers for a long time. Let's look at the additive identity with just scalars, or just numbers. So in scalars, back when everything was a real number, if you had x plus what number equals x? Zero. Plus zero. So if we add zero to any number, it's not going to change it. So that's what we call the additive identity right there. So in matrices, so first of all, it, I could write 0, 
So there is a matrix such that if I add it to A, I get A. What do you think this matrix is going to look like? Let's talk about dimension first. What dimension will this zero matrix be? be so what, prop, what dimensions do I have to have so that I'm allowed to add together? They'll have the same dimensions to say. They better have the same dimensions. So right away, if I know dimensions of A are M by N, then the dimension of this matrix better be m by n. It needs to be the same exact dimension. And <clears throat> thinking back to addition, if I write down aij, and I want to get back aij, what number should I be adding to each entry so I don't change anything? Zero. Better be adding a bunch of zeros in here. So this matrix is going to be filled up with zeros. So it just got zeros in every entry. It just needs to have the right dimension. So I'm allowed to add. So the way that we write this matrix is exactly the way I wrote it down here. I just write a bold zero. So I just take my zero and circle around it three or four times. So it looks like a bold zero. Not to be confused with the number zero written above. So number zero, I just use regular zero. For a matrix zero, I draw a bold zero. So I know it's the zero matrix. All right, so that's the additive identity. And oh, look at that. Time flies when you're having fun with matrices.